Hi, I'm Daniel Francis, co-owner and industrial designer here at MSB Technology. Today, I want to talk to you about the fiber connection we use in our products, specifically the use of an active optical cable, also known as AOC, with the Cascade DAC link and our Pro ISL interfaces. This technology can get complicated fast, so please watch this video all the way through before experimenting with your MSB equipment. Your DAC could be permanently damaged if the wrong cabling is used. There are a lot of names and technical configurations we will be discussing, so please check the written guide before purchasing any cabling to ensure it will be compatible. So, why use AOC? Well, at MSB, we're always exploring ways to reliably push performance through technology advancements, and as it turns out, AOC connections show a lot of promise. Our DACs rely on fiber because it gives us total galvanic isolation while seemingly infinite cable lengths and all the while providing extreme data bandwidths. The stock setup we ship with works very well as a reliable reference. But like many of you, we're curious, is there just a little bit more we can get out of an MSB DAC? That's where active optical cables come in. An AOC combines the fiber cable and the transceivers into one closed system. No separate modules, no separate cables, a closed and perfectly matched system. The simplicity of this system is key. You remove extra junctions with no mismatched parts. There's no dirty fiber ends, no half-seated connectors. This matched system can also run at 20% reduced power consumption, achieving an even lower noise floor. The cable itself is then tuned for the specific laser light being used, and it doesn't need to overcome any air gaps. While the results may vary somewhat by a listener's system, the overwhelming response from our beta testers has consistently reported significant improvements using AOC on the Cascade DAC and digital directors alike. We would love for you to share your feedback on the forum if you have been able to test out an alternative cabling for your MSB equipment. Now, let's get into some of the details. First, let me clear up one common question. Our Pro ISL and our Cascade Fiber Link is not Ethernet. It is not based on fiber ethernet protocols in any way, and it runs at much lower power levels than fiber ethernet interfaces. Plugging ethernet fiber into an MSB product can burn out the optical receivers and will require replacing the SFP modules. Please be mindful. We use SFP fiber technology as a physical platform, but the data and the way we use it is completely unique to MSB. Pro ISL protocols are entirely different from the link between digital directors and their analog converters. There is absolutely no room for experimentation on gear configurations. Only use as intended and labeled. Now, to discuss the handling of standard modules and cabling. Fiber SFP modules are hot swappable. That means you can experiment without powering off your equipment, but you must exercise basic ESD precautions. Before touching the SFP module, always ground yourself to the chassis with your other hand. Now, let's first explain the stock configuration. Every DAC will ship with two matched single mode SFP optical modules already installed. There will be a single mode duplex LC fiber patch cable to connect them. This is a tried and true reliable system. You can plug and unplug this fiber cable almost indefinitely. And if any part wears out, it's easy and inexpensive to replace, but it does require some care. When handling SFP modules and fiber cables, make sure the connectors are clean and free of dust. Also, double check that the latch on the module is closed because leaving it open can cause grounding issues if it shorts to the case. We recommend using this configuration for those of you who like to A-B test cables, gear, or swap connections often. It's durable, modular, and designed for frequent changes. For removing these fiber cables, depress the plastic locking clip on the back of the cable and pull. When inserting the cable, make sure the lock audibly clicks into place. To change out the SFP modules, swing the removal lever out. This will disengage the locking mechanism and allow the SFP module to be pulled free. Pull the module out by the lever arm itself, not the body. If the SFP module is unlocked correctly, the module should slide out easily with little to no effort. If it seems stuck, do not force it. It is likely still locked in place. When inserting a new SFP module, make sure it is firmly inserted then close the lever arm into the stored position. If this lever is left open, it can short the isolated connection to the chassis, and this will prevent the DAC from working correctly. Here are a few tips for choosing replacement SFP modules and cables. First, 
SFP modules need to be ordered as a set and have the same module at both ends. The ideal SFP module will be single mode, which has the lowest jitter possible. Maximum power consumption must be under two watts, ideally one watt or less for best performance. The cable used must match whatever SFP module type is ordered. For example, a single mode SFP module should have a single mode fiber patch cable. For best reliability, the cable length needs to be a minimum of two meters in length or longer. Any length beyond that is fine and can work in your system depending on the setup. We will have some recommended options included in the written guide. Now, let's discuss AOC. There are some risks involved with this cable type. Every time you insert and remove the cabling, you are actually wearing out a direct connection on the PCB motherboard itself. That means the wear point shifts from the removable and replaceable SFP module to the DAC motherboard. If worn out to an unreliable state, the motherboard will need to be replaced on both the digital director and the analog converter. This will not be a warranty repair and can be quite expensive to do. Those sockets are only rated for a few hundred cycles. Depending on the SFP module, it could be as few as 200 or 300 insertions. For any home installation, this will not be a concern. If the system is installed and infrequently moved, you will never run into this issue. This is a severe warning for dealers and demos and the enthusiast who wants to constantly experiment and AB with cabling in their system. While this is encouraged, we need you to be mindful. It is a lot of insertions, but we want to make sure you are very aware of the potential cost, when, and if a related failure due to excessive insertions happens. I don't want to scare you off from trying AOC, as the sonic benefits are well worth it in the long term. To change out the AOC cable, simply pull the integrated release tab. This is a completely integrated mechanism and quite easy to use. This will disengage the locking mechanism while the SFP module pulls free. When inserting a new AOC cable, simply make sure that it is firmly inserted and latched in place. Okay, on to choosing the right AOC cable. If you want to try an AOC cable, here's what to look for. It must be a 10 gigabit SFP plus architecture. Higher speed cables like 25G or 100G may work, but they're not optimized for audio use and can sometimes reduce performance. They will use additional power and add more noise to the system. More isn't always better in this case. Maximum power consumption should be under two watts, ideally one watt or less for best performance. With AOC, any length will work. It does not matter at all. Please pick what fits best in your rack and system. Also, the color does not matter. You will see a lot of orange and teal jackets, which are indicators for how the product is manufactured, but this will not affect the performance. And remember, any brand of a 10G AOC cable should work. This is a standardized platform, so anyone manufacturing to the spec should be a compatible option. Now, there are a couple very important things to cover here on what not to use. First, do not use direct attach copper, also known as DAC cables. I know it sounds very similar to our products as DACs, but these are bad for our products. They may look similar to AOCs, but they bypass isolation, carry electrical noise, and will damage your DAC's motherboard. These include a direct copper line from one product to the other. And this is exactly what the product is designed not to do. Another cable to avoid is called a passive cable. This is a hardwired version and will similarly damage the product. MSB products are designed specifically for optical only. The technical testing of the AOC integrated system has shown improved measurements in our lab. Before deciding to recommend this solution, we completed excessive testing with dealers and home users alike. Many of our testers returned positive feedback about the improvement in the sound in every possible way. Most described improved sound stage with the solidity of instruments and singers more tightly focused. We will stock and provide recommended cables through our dealer network, but these will be off the shelf products. Please feel free to order them directly online in your local country. Links will be provided in the written guide and kept up to date as we add and remove products. We are excited to hear how implementing the new AOC connections with your MSB products changes the performance for you. Please share your feedback and results on specific cables you found and worked with with our community and patrons online. There will be more details and specifications for stock SFP modules, cabling, and AOC options provided in the written guide. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or join us on the MSB community forum. And as always, once your system is set, sit back and enjoy the music.